Jackie, pack up. We're moving out. Moving out? Another cell block. Is it bigger? Hi, I'm Danny Boyd, and this is Cinema Sticks. Okay. Hey, Jack. <laughs> I not only had always dreamed of working with Sidney the Man, uh, when I first directed my first short movie, Multifacial. Which audition are you here for? Uh, the beer commercial. You sure? Yeah, you're Greg Thomas, right? I didn't know how to direct, and I purchased a book called Making Movies by Sidney the Man. And that book actually gave me the confidence to go direct this short movie. No one moved. No one talked. No one made a single sound. So a while back, I made a video on Vin Diesel's early years as a New York-based actor and filmmaker about how he wrote, self-directed, and hustled his way into Hollywood, into the films of Brad Bird and Steven Spielberg, before ever gripping the taut leather of a racing wheel. Captain, the decent thing to do is to at least take you down the road to the next town. A glimpse into a Vin Diesel that could have been, and from time to time, almost was. I want to go pro se. I'm going to be my own lawyer. Do you know what pro se means? Soda. What do you mean, soda? Uh, if you defend yourself, it's called pro se. I'm going to defend myself. So 10 years later, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to work with Sidney Lumet. Hi, I'm Jackie Donoshio. This is the 2006 film Find Me Guilty, directed by Lumet, the man behind some of the greatest courtroom dramas in history. Where did that come from? Oh, it's it's the same night. Same night. You're quiet, you're quiet. Quiet. And no, objectively, no, this isn't one of them. But the movie has got charm, a lack of self-seriousness, and a cast of voices I could listen to for hours. Members of the jury, by law, you have to be able to see the witness box. Can you all see the witness box? It's the true-to-life story of Jackie DiNorcio, a New York-based mobster and hustler who, against all better advice, represents himself at trial, and eventually wins over a court, a jury, a judge, 19 co-defendants and their lawyers through charisma, humor, sincerity, and genuine goodwill. I want to apologize for my action in court before. I want you to understand, whatever I said, I meant no disrespect to you. And honestly? I respect you more than any other judge I ever faced. I faced a lot of them. That's exactly what Vin Diesel and his performance in this movie does on the meta level also. To join their list of witnesses and lie about these men in? Objection! Sustained, Mr. Denorcio. What? It starts off uncertain, a seeming liability, a shtick, a risk to the proceedings, and ends up the absolute star of the show. And yes, before you ask, this is unequivocally a story about family. Okay, so I don't think I can even begin to talk about a Cindy Lament movie without first mentioning his staging. I made a whole video about it for his 1974 adaptation of Orient Express, and it's a huge part of what allows the performances in his movies to exist in the way that they do. Gripping, a little raw. Please, quiet down, please. You'll all get a chance to talk. And not too removed from the theatricality of live, well, theater, where Lumet's directing career began. Lumet favors wide shots and clean, complex character compositions. Was it my daughter in that house? Makes sense, as the courtroom is, in essence, a stage the jury its audience, and the witnesses and defendants and lawyers its players. How do I look, good? (laughs) Sometimes the emotion between players is intimate, and the camera and their vocal intensity will reflect that. Do you believe that I still love you? No. While other times it's large and meant for the whole room. How long I known you guys? I known them since we were little babies. I love these guys. They're all I got. But always, while in court, any relationship that does exist is a relationship being observed. By us, by the jury, shots are held long above average, cutting won't always save an argument 
or a joke. And they were trying to fill your mind with so much baloney that in the end, you think, oh God, there's so much there, there has to be something to it. Not to say every scene in Find Me Guilty takes place in court. Interwoven are tighter moments that play out on a fundamentally different level. This scene, where Diesel finds out his mother has died, is acted completely from behind his hands. It's too late. And it's good. Then on the flip side, there's the humor, when and where it hits. Vin Diesel said he didn't set out to play the character comedic. He strove for Jackie D's truths. Jokes were incidental, and when they land, they land. Extravagant! Do I look Listen. extravagant? When they don't, they don't. This ain't even my hat. Like I said, there's a rockiness towards the beginning of this movie. It's like culture shock. I don't know if it's brilliant or a complete accident that my experience watching Vin Diesel's performance every time that I do goes through the exact same journey as the court's experience of watching this character that he's playing. That shift in thought from who on earth allowed this to happen, who let this guy go up here, represent himself, put all of our futures at risk, Slash, who gave Vin Diesel a hairpiece, told him to put on 30 pounds of sugar weight and pretend to be a gangster. Because that's what that table wants me to be. To, I can't believe that that worked. And I think that's exactly the point. It's a complete transformation in performer, in expectation, in character. We know it. You're hungry. And the film knows it. From opening statement. I'm not a gangster, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a gangster. The closing argument. That I'm not a gangster, I'm just a gangster. I'm not gonna read from this. Lamette even made Diesel wear the makeup at table reads prior to shooting, not for his sake, but for the sake of all the other actors involved. That's who they had to see to get the performances Lumet needed. Who do you call? I call Saul. That's right. Come here. Now, does Vin Diesel really transform into the real guy? I don't know. But he does transform into somebody. He studied tapes, he met the man, had conversations with him, developed the physicality for him, opted to gain the weight and not wear a bodysuit just to give himself more control over the movements he'd rehearsed for the character he committed on an unlikely level and created something distinctly different, yet distinctly his own. And part of that was him, part of that was Lumet's direction, and part of that was what Diesel took from Lumet prior to the picture through learning directing from Lumet's book, Making Movies, as he mentions, one of the definitive introductory texts on filmmaking. That book shaped his approach to the work. Because it allowed me to in some ways, uh, understand what the director's job is or the director's mandate is. Um, it allowed me to uh, work on every role that I've ever been given. Uh, I'm a strong advocate for actors taking the roles that they're about to play and customizing them slightly for themselves. This movie, multifacial, a few others, offered some odd insight into some alternate reality career somewhere out there that I would have loved to have seen play out, get refined. I don't think Find Me Guilty was ever going to be the next 12 Angry Men, but it did surprise me, and every time I watch it, I find it very hard not to love it when I'm done. Why did he say I didn't hit a punchline? <laughs> so if you do go out and you start it, all I can say is watch it through. Think about how you feel about this guy at the beginning, then think about how you feel about him by the end. Because if nothing else, I don't think it'll be the same. I'm Danny Boyd. Thanks for watching. We need to shut the curtain. Mark it. 
Hey everybody, today's video was brought to you by Mubi, a curated streaming service dedicated to elevating great cinema from all across the world. From iconic directors to emerging auteurs, Mubi's always got something new and amazing to discover. And that's because with Mubi, every film you see is hand-selected by a team of curators, real people, giving you access to the best of cinema at your fingertips, streaming anytime, anywhere. And right now in the US, Mubi is featuring a wealth of directorial debuts in a collection called First Films First, including Wes Anderson's Bottle Rocket from 1996, and a personal recommendation of mine, Following, the Christopher Nolan directed and shot indie from 98. You can watch either film or anything else streaming on Mubi for free with an extended 30-day trial if you go to mubi.com slash cinemasticks. Again, that's M-U-B-I dot com slash cinemasticks for a whole month of great cinema for free.